Apologies for the throwaway, but given the title, I hope everyone can understand why we want to stay anonymous. Don't care if you believe me, the title is correct. I, a 28-year-old male, have been in a relationship with my now fiancé, a 27-year-old female for the last five years and now engaged for a couple of weeks. She also happens to be my stepsister as well. Our parents want us to break it off and break up because they think it's weird. The problem with this is, I have known my fiancé for more than eight years now, and the only reason why we are step-siblings is because her father and my mother started to date three years back, after we introduced them to each other and got married last year. My mother and her father were both single when we introduced them to each other at her 23rd birthday party, and we never thought a relationship would happen between them, because they are worlds apart. Introducing the parents was just one of those things that comes with being in a relationship, that was our thoughts. Neither my father nor her mother are alive. We found out about them dating seven months into their relationship. And yes, it was weird as hell, but we decided to stay out of it because their relationship had nothing to do with us, and they seemed happy. Everything was going sort of okay, but we did keep our distance from them as the situation was still weird for us. They also left us alone, but that all stopped after their wedding. Everything started with weird comments from them here and there, and my mother all of a sudden started talking to me about this pretty girl she works with or the new girl at the grocery store wanting to introduce me. Her father basically did the same, but in a more subtle way, talking about not getting married young, traveling, enjoying life, all that stuff. We found this strange and multiple times we asked them to stop. Everything escalated after I proposed and they were pissed to say the least when we told them. They got visibly angry, yelling at us and asking, what will people think? Are we trying to make them look bad? We are siblings. The joke of us dating has gone on long enough, and it's time we break up because we are no longer allowed to date each other since we became a family after they married. They actually demanded that we call off the engagement and break up because they are tired of how awkward we made them feel and having to hear people talking behind their back. We are disgusting. My fiancé was actually in tears at this point. I told them to go and frick themselves, as we did nothing wrong. And if anyone was disgusting, it was them because who goes out and marries their child's partner's parent? If they want to see disgust, they should look into a mirror. Things almost got physical between my fiancé's father and me. But my fiancé came between us and just asked if we could leave. I was pissed. I don't think I've ever been that angry. Now call me childish, disgusting, a pig, or the jerk, whatever. But I know I'm a weenie. With how pissed I was, I wanted to get one last jab in before leaving their house. Just before I walked out the door, I yelled, Don't worry about us, just know I will enjoy freaking my sister tonight. She was pissed at that comment, and told me in the car that it was unnecessary. But the next morning, after all the emotions weren't so high, she actually laughed at it but still told me that it was unnecessary. I kind of agree with her. Our phones have been going crazy with all the calls and texts, telling us they refuse to support us and will cut us off if we decide to continue dating, and a bunch of other things I don't think are allowed on here. My fiancé and I are on the same page. We will not be breaking up or calling off anything. And if that means we do some cutting off, we are happy to do so. I know it looks bad looking in from the outside, as we are technically step-siblings, and I don't want to sound like a nine-year-old. But we dated first. What if we were already married? Will they then demand that we get divorced? She agreed with me posting, but under a throwaway to ask for judgment because this whole situation and their demands are complete shoot, in my opinion. We'll give additional information if needed, depending on what is asked. Am I the idiot? Edit. If and when our parents show up again, which they will, I'm working on a couple of more jabs. If you have any, please share. Petty as frick over here. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Oh, I would start referring to each other as my brother lover and sister lover when talking to the parents. If they're around, introduce yourselves to their friends as such. Get people asking why parents are allowing this to happen. Make them have to explain it. They're the ones making this weird. They could have easily turned this into a huge family joke. You fell in love with your fiance. And it's obvious where you get your great taste in partners from. Have fun with it. But they decided that they only get the relationship, and you two should end yours, stupid as hell. 
You two go on, get married, make babies who are their own cousins. Embrace the joke and invite the rest of the family to join in on the laugh. Comment two, not the idiot. No, it doesn't look bad on the outside. You are a couple and soon to be fiancés, no matter what your parents do or think. Like you say yourself, if they want to have someone to be ashamed of, they should look in the mirror. In my opinion, this whole thing wouldn't be bad at all if they both just thought they are meant to be together. Who cares? But they don't have the right to judge you for a situation they created. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around. So it's been a month since I last spilled the beans on the whole step-sibling fiancé drama. You'd think things might have cooled down, but nope, they've only heated up. And not in a good way. First off, my fiancé's dad, let's call him Mr. High and Mighty, decided to take matters into his own hands. He went behind our backs and tried to sabotage our relationship by reaching out to my exes. Yeah, you heard that right. He actually thought he could stir up some old flames to distract me from my fiancé. As if that wasn't enough, he also started spreading rumors around town about us, painting us as some sort of twisted couple. But here's the kicker. One of my exes, who's still a friend, told me everything. She was as grossed out by his actions as I was. My fiancé and I confronted him, and it was a mess. Voices were raised, tears were shed, and in the end, Mr. High and Mighty walked out saying he was done with us both. That he couldn't stand the shame we were bringing upon the family, as if he hadn't done enough of that himself. Now my mom, she's been a bit more subtle, but no less destructive. She's been playing the victim, crying to our relatives about how her son has been led astray by his stepsister. It's like she's trying to gather an army of sympathizers to pressure us into breaking up. And then there was the incident at the bank. My fiance and I share a joint account for our wedding savings. Well. Guess who tried to drain the account? My dear mother. She somehow convinced the bank manager she was looking out for my best interests. Thankfully, we got there in time to stop it, but the betrayal stung deep. But wait, there's more. Just when we thought we could catch a break, my fiance's job suddenly became a nightmare. Her boss, who's apparently golf buddies with her dad, started giving her the worst shifts and impossible workloads. It was clear what was happening. They were trying to break her, make her dependent on them again. We've been fighting back though. My fiance is looking for a new job and we've tightened our circle of friends. We're leaning on each other more than ever. It's us against the world, it seems. And just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. My fiance found out she's pregnant. We were overjoyed for a moment until we realized this was just more fuel for the fire. Our parents' reaction was as expected. They accused us of being irresponsible and reckless. They even hinted that we did it on purpose to trap them into accepting our relationship. We're keeping the baby, of course. It's a little light in all this darkness. But it's also made us more vulnerable. We're bracing ourselves for the next wave of attacks because we know they're coming. Through all this, I've been trying to keep a cool head, but it's hard. I'm angry all the time. I resent my mom and her husband for what they're putting us through. I resent them for not seeing how happy my fiance makes me, for not understanding that our relationship is none of their business. But here's the thing. I'm starting to accept this terrible situation. I'm accepting that our parents may never come around, that they might never be a part of our lives or our child's life. And that's okay. We have each other, and we'll build our own family, one that's based on love, not blood or societal norms. So, yeah, that's where we're at. A month of battles, big and small, a month of holding on to each other like life rafts in a stormy sea. And through it all, I've learned that sometimes, the family you choose is more of a family than the one you're born into. Thanks for reading. My wife gets pregnant again, despite my wishes for no more kids. So I book a counseling session and plan to serve her divorce papers. My wife, 43-year-old female, and I, 46-year-old male, have been married for 10 years and have three boys. Our lives are very busy with work, kids, extended family, house projects, etc. I love my wife immensely and long to have emotional and physical intimacy, even just kisses, hugs, hand-holding, whatever, with her. However, for most of our marriage, she has been completely focused on the kids, so we really only have a co-parent slash roommate relationship. Of course, I understand this. The kids have to be the top priority. 
But for the last eight years or so, if there's not a kid in our bed at night, then my wife is in a kid's bed with them. I try to get them to sleep in their own beds and encourage her to sleep with me alone, but it's rarely successful. I've made it very clear to her that I do not want any more kids. I'm more than ready to get our relationship back on track now that the youngest is of school age. I'm also exhausted and overwhelmed all the time with everything on my plate. I can't and don't want to add another kid to the mix. She, on the other hand, longs for a fourth baby. We've gone back and forth so much, but I am adamant that we should just enjoy the three we have. My wife is on birth control and has always made it a point to have an alarm set, so she takes it at the same time every day. She is still trying to work on me to get me to agree to another baby, so I can't schedule a vasectomy yet. She brings it up at least once a day. Well, she told me a few days ago that she's pregnant. She's so happy, and I'm devastated. She won't even consider termination. I love my wife so much. She's a great person, and I know in the end I'll love this baby. But now there's no end in sight to this overwhelmed, exhausted, emotionally lonely life. Also, I'm realizing that these last few months she's actually initiated intimacy several times, which never happens. I can't help thinking that she got pregnant on purpose. She wanted it so much she wasn't going to just give up. It would be in character, I suppose, for her to just do what she wants. I hate to say it, but she does disregard my feelings on things quite often, and she knew there's nothing I could do about it. Would I be the jerk if I told her I want to divorce? My kids are my life, and I don't want to leave them at all. But I feel like our marriage is not going to get any better. I've asked her to go to marriage counseling several times over the years, but she refuses every time, saying we don't need it. And now I've kind of lost trust in her. It would break my heart to do this to the kids, and I don't know if my feelings are worth doing it over. Please tell me if I'd be the jerk here. Edit. To be clear, if we divorce, I will push as hard as necessary for 50 50 its parenting time and joint custody for all the kids. They are my number one priority in life. I just don't know if my lack of emotional fulfillment in our relationship, my wife's general disregard for my feelings, and the other marriage issues are worth tearing the kids' worlds apart. Edit hash two. Because everyone is saying it, I didn't wear condoms because we never have. And if I suddenly started, she'd have accused me of not trusting her or become suspicious. And if I had just gone and gotten a vasectomy, she definitely would have been angry and felt betrayed. I was trusting her. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not sure divorce is the answer yet. Maybe let it simmer a bit. However, I would have a serious discussion with your wife about sleeping arrangements and let her know it's affecting your marriage. Since she is now pregnant, I would tell her you are getting a vasectomy. Don't make it a secret, but let her know this is as much as you can handle and make the appointment. Obviously, kids take up a huge chunk of attention, but with four, it's time to get more strict on the sleeping arrangements. If nothing helps, then tell her counseling or you are considering divorce. By the way, I got pregnant with my youngest while on birth control. It happens. But my husband got a vasectomy right after that. Nothing else is foolproof except abstinence. Comment two. I feel like this advice in the comments is really harsh. Why on earth would you assume your spouse would intentionally get pregnant to necessitate you needing to use condoms or abstain from intimacy? If you were at that point of distrust, you probably would have been divorcing already because trust is the most important thing in a marriage. I feel for you, bro. I want another baby. And my husband doesn't but I would never betray his trust like this. This, plus your comment about her doing whatever she wants, would really have me reevaluating the relationship. I don't know how you come back from this. Now, for the update, thanks for all the comments on my last post. They really made me think. So, a lot has happened in the past week. My wife's pregnancy news hit me like a ton of bricks, and I've been trying to wrap my head around it all. I've been feeling trapped, like I'm stuck on a path I didn't choose, and it's been eating me up inside. The tension at home has been thick enough to cut with a knife. My wife, she's over the moon about the baby, but I can't shake the feeling that she went behind my back. I've been pulling away, and she's noticed. We had a huge fight about it. She said I was being cold and distant, and I finally let it all out. I told her I felt betrayed, that I didn't want another kid, and that I was considering divorce. She was shocked, and it led to her crying and pleading with me not to tear our family apart, I've been sleeping in the guest room since then. It's like we're strangers living under the same roof. 
The kids can sense something's off, and it's breaking my heart. I've been trying to keep things normal for them, but it's hard. They keep asking why mommy and daddy are fighting, and I don't know what to tell them. Work has been a nightmare, too. I'm barely keeping my head above water with all the stress from home. My boss noticed and pulled me aside, asking if everything was okay. I didn't go into details, but I said I was dealing with some personal issues. He gave me a few days off to sort things out, which I appreciated, but it's not like I can solve all my problems in a few days. I've been talking to a lawyer about the divorce just to know my options. It's not what I want, but I feel like I need to be prepared for anything at this point. The lawyer said with the new baby on the way, things could get complicated, especially with custody and support. It's a mess, and I'm trying to figure out the least damaging way to handle it. Then out of nowhere, my wife dropped a news. She told me she's been feeling guilty and that she needs to come clean. She admitted that she stopped taking her birth control months ago. She thought if she got pregnant, it would bring us closer together. I was floored. I felt a mix of anger, betrayal, and sadness. It was like my worst suspicions had been confirmed. We had a long, hard talk after her confession. I told her how her actions had shattered my trust. She begged for forgiveness, saying she just wanted our family to grow and for us to be happy. But how can we be happy when our foundation is built on lies? I've been spending a lot of time with the boys, trying to give them some stability amidst all this chaos. We've been doing their favorite things, like going to the park and playing video games together. I want them to know that no matter what happens, I'm here for them. The future is uncertain and I'm scared. I love my wife, but I don't know if I can get past this. I'm torn between fighting for my marriage and starting over for my own sanity. It's a decision that weighs heavily on me every day. I've scheduled an appointment with a marriage counselor for myself, even though my wife still refuses to go. I need to talk to someone about all of this, to help me sort through my feelings and figure out what to do next. It's a small step, but it's something, so that's where things stand. A week of revelations, arguments, and tough decisions. I'm just trying to do what's best for my kids and for myself, but it's hard to know what that is right now. Thanks for reading. My wife's mother abused her at our wedding, so I kicked her out and made sure she'll never forget the day she crossed us. I'm 29-year-old male. My wife is 22-year-old female. She has been no contact with her mother since she was 17, reason being she was sexually attacked by a colleague of her mother when she was 16, and when she told her mother what happened, her mother told her to never speak about this to anyone. The mother kept bringing the colleague over to the house for dinner parties, and my now wife ended up leaving home to live with her grandmother. She has accomplished so much on her own since then, graduated with a degree last year, and we very recently got married, eloped. Before graduation, she asked me if she should reconcile with her estranged parents. She was wanting to connect with her father, but didn't know how to go about it without also having to communicate with her mother to some extent. My wife is an incredibly compassionate person. I wanted to protect her from getting hurt again, but I also didn't want to stand in the way of her making her own choices. She decided to invite her parents to her graduation, introduce me to them, and catch them up cordially on her life. I supported that. I went to go see them with her. It was not smooth, but it opened up communication between my wife and her father. So much so that we invited them to the small reception we threw for friends and family after we were married. This happened very recently. Her mom has been staying with us. The stay was supposed to be two weeks, but has now been cut short by me. Things began to fall apart when my mother-in-law argued with my wife about the elopement. She was upset we didn't have a real wedding and kept giving my wife trouble for that behind my back. I noticed that in my presence, she would switch up very quickly. But as soon as she knew I wasn't around, she would berate my wife, often getting physical, holding her arm roughly, shaking her, etc. My wife shared this with me. I encouraged her to be assertive, and she agreed, saying that she needs to resolve this with her mother on her own. It has to be her. She asked me not to get involved, but to pretend to leave the house and then not actually leave. She said she felt safer confronting her mother knowing I was around, like a shadow. I overheard their conversation. My wife was calm and neutral, didn't get emotional, kept even tempered, and was honest and direct. I was feeling so proud of her. She's come a long way. And she's always wanted to be able to have this kind of redemption, I guess. 
being able to stand up to herself now for the 16-year-old version of her that couldn't. Her mother, however, blew up. Zero to 100. My wife expressed that the conversation was no longer productive and she was going to walk away. She attempted to leave the room and head toward me. She came around the corner when my mother-in-law, who was behind my wife, grabbed my wife's hair and pulled her back. She was about to slap my wife, but I intervened by then. It takes a lot for me to lose my composure. This was it. I took over from that point onward. To cut this short, mother-in-law was packed up and out of my house real quick. Put her on the next flight. I don't feel any regret for kicking out the mother-in-law, but I don't know if I did the right thing because I didn't allow my wife any involvement once the attack happened. A part of me feels like I took away an opportunity for her to overcome her trauma. Edit. I saw it in the comments, so I just want to add that my wife is not upset by how I handled it. I grew up in the foster system and never had the experience of having parents and family. Sometimes I struggle to relate to my wife when it comes to that, and I just wanted to get a bit of perspective so I can continue to better support her without my own feelings getting in the way. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. She was about to slap my wife, but I intervened by then. You saved your wife from blatant domestic violence. You did what she needed you to do. Facing trauma doesn't mean entering an MMA cage match with your aggressor in your own house. It's about reclaiming your life. Your wife did that. Comment 2. I don't know if I did the right thing, because I didn't allow my wife any involvement once the attack happened. I mean, you did exactly what you were there to do, right? You could just ask your wife how she feels about your actions. Then you'd have no reason to second-guess yourself. Now, for the update. Thanks for sticking around for this update. So, after the whole mess with my mother-in-law, things seemed to settle down. My wife was actually relieved her mom was gone, and we were getting back to our routine. But then, her dad called. He wanted to meet up. Just him and me. I thought it was about what happened with his wife, but boy was I wrong. We met at a diner, and he started talking about how he's always felt guilty for not protecting my wife when she was younger. He said he was planning to leave her mom and wanted my wife to know he was on her side. I was skeptical, but I listened. He even had tears in his eyes. I thought maybe this was a turning point. A week later, he invites us over for dinner, saying he's got something important to share. We go, and it's just him. The house feels different, like he's actually planning to start fresh, then he drops the shocker he's been diagnosed with a terminal illness. He's got maybe a year left. My wife breaks down, and I'm just in shock. He asks for forgiveness for everything. Or, my wife, being the person she is, says she needs time, but she's there for him. Now here's where it gets twisted. A few days after that dinner, my wife's mom shows up at our door, unannounced, crying about how her husband is leaving her and how she's got nowhere to go. My wife is torn, but she's not heartless. She lets her in against my better judgment. I'm fuming inside, but trying to keep it together for my wife's sake. Turns out her dad hadn't told her mom about his illness yet. My wife decides to be the one to break the news to her. They have this long emotional talk and it seems like they're making amends. Her mom is staying with us again and I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. And drop it does. One evening, I overhear her mom on the phone laughing, saying how easy it was to fool us with the sick husband act and how she's going to make sure she gets everything in the divorce. My blood boils. I confront her, and she just smirks, saying I have no proof. I tell my wife, and she's devastated. She confronts her dad, and he breaks down, admitting it was all a lie to get back at her mom for years of misery. My wife is crushed. She's been played by both her parents. I'm resentful, angry, and feeling helpless. I want to throw her mom out again, but my wife says no. She wants to handle it her way. She's got this steely look in her eyes I've never seen before. She tells her mom she's got one day to leave, and if she ever comes back, my wife will make sure her lies are exposed to everyone they know. Her mom leaves, and my wife is quiet for days. She's processing, grieving for the family she never had and the parents she thought she could have. I'm just there, supporting her, hating that she's going through this, but admiring her strength. We're picking up the pieces now. My wife is focusing on her career, and we're talking about starting our own family, building something real and true. It's a terrible situation, but she's accepting it, moving forward. I'm just hoping we can leave all this drama behind us. 
Thanks for reading this far. It's been a rough couple of weeks. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.